Hi, today we're going to create a comparative bar graph. The first step in creating a comparative bar graph is to ensure the data that you need to graph is produced in your Excel document. So I've reproduced, um, I think it's table 6.1, into this Excel document in exactly the same format that it's presented in the textbook. So to create a comparative bar graph that's already set up like this, with our two series or our two sets of data and all of the different variables or diseases are down the left-hand side. All we need to do is to click and highlight all of the data, go into insert, click on our first type of column or bar chart. And the first one that exists is just as good as any of them. As you can see, it's a bit difficult to read. So we're just going to expand it a little bit. Now, eventually we're going to drop this into a Word document and it needs to adhere to all of the uh, conventions of a graph dropped into a report. In geography, we don't use chart titles within the graph because if it's a standalone graph, that would be fine. But because we're assuming that, as most people would, they would drop it into a report or a presentation, it makes more sense to create figure numbers and titles and also allows you to find the source um, and to modify the document as you see fit to fit it into your document. So the first thing we need to do is we realise that there's not all of the information that we require on our graph. If we go to the plus sign on the right hand side, we can add our axes titles and you can see that we get axes titles here very easily. So up on this left hand side, we need to identify from our OneNote document what it is or what's a unit of measurement that we are producing or showing. So if we have a look in table 6.1, it talks about millions, so deaths in millions. We go back to our Excel document and we just change this to deaths and of course our units of measurement are always put in brackets. Please remember that our axes must use title case. That means the, t the starting letter of each major word, excepting words like of or the, if it doesn't start at the beginning, are used, or we use a capital letter at the beginning. Our axis title down here are the 12 big killers. 12 big killer diseases. Um, luckily for us, it has already identified the two series, the date ranges for our data. But to make it easier for us to understand the information that we have in front of us, we can actually add uh, values or add labels. So if we have a look down here, it says add data labels. And because I've clicked on one red bar, it means that all of the red bars will get a data label. If I click on a blue bar, I also go over to data labels and it will add them as well. Now we can see that there are some problems in terms of overcrowding and of course the size of our data values. So what we want to do is to reduce the size of our data values. The first one, we click on and it identifies all of the blue ones. Hold down the control key and then just click on no, it's not going to do it for us today. So click on the blue key and what I would do is just go into home and reduce the font size down to about seven. Oop. Do the same for the red ones. Click on it and change the font size down to about seven. It fixes up some of our problems. It doesn't resolve them. But what we're going to do is to drop it into a Word document and resolve those overcrowding issues in the Word document. So while we've got it highlighted, we control C, we open up a Word document, and we control V, we drop our graph in. Now again, I actually find it quite difficult um, to see this. So what I'm going to do is change the layout to orientation to landscape and what that also allows me to do is to expand this a little bit longer to make it a lot easier to see. 
Now, because I'm old, I need to focus in a little bit closer. Now, doing those two things has actually resolved a lot of our problems. We don't see any overcrowding of our numbers. The other thing we're looking for is the numbers being affected by lines. None of our numbers, our data value, should cross a line. So the way to move that is to click on the series, click on it again, and it actually gives us that particular data value. And we can use our arrow keys, or we can click and drag it, once I get the four squares up, we can click and drag it and move it upwards to make it a lot easier and get it out of the way. So I'm just going to move that up a little bit more. Okay, and what that's done is it's moved it off the line, but it's still attached to, we can understand that it's linked to the tuberculosis 2002 tab. Everything else on here at the moment looks pretty good except of course I've just moved all of that information. Okay, so we've got all of that, which looks good. Um, we may move down now a little bit. Okay, so yeah, it all looks good. We now need to follow all of the conventions that a graph should have. So the first thing is our graph should have a border. Now on here, the border already exists. The standard is for just a black border. Just make it simple. We don't want it to be anything fancy. You already know how to insert captions in Word. So we click on right click, insert caption. It automatically comes up with a figure number and we give it an appropriate heading. Now sometimes if we're just representing exactly the same data that was put into table form, we can use the same Heading. So this is deaths caused by the 12 big killers, 2002 and 2000, uh, sorry, 1993. By 12 big killers, 2002 and 1993. Press OK. And we've already got what we need. We're just going to double check that it's an appropriate size using a usually 11 point font is a good size and we make sure our font colour is black. We then press shift enter. We can unitalicize it by pressing control I and we now put in our source. Our source is always the author. If it's an individual, it's the author's surname. If it's an organisation, it can be the acronym or the full name of that organisation, comma, the year of publication. Now in here, it tells us that it's based on data from WHO. It doesn't give us a year, but we've got to assume that it's got to be after 2000. So, um, sorry, in Word, let's have a look at the information. So we can put in the same based on data from World Health Organization. And the date is unknown. Okay. Now, with this source, the only other thing we need to do is to reduce the font size. So the source is not as important as our heading, so we can bring that down to about a nine point font. We have now done all of the things that a good graph should have, and we have presented.